Welcome back to a very strange episode of Frontier for episode 20 with me, Mr. CDP. We're back here on Frontier. Um, it's March 2. I'm heading to the quarry because I've got uh, almost a full load of stone which needs to go to my um, my slab factory, my stone factory because that's, we haven't run out but uh, while we've got it we might as well take it. Um, but I've been summoned to the authority headquarters at the main gate. I'm a little bit nervous, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm not quite sure why I've been summoned, but anyway, we'll head over. Um, I'll go for my meeting, and then I'll probably go into, uh, we'll be into April, won't we? Into April, um, hopefully we'll have some crops to sort out, some horses to exercise. We'll see how our... Um, Crude oil refinery manufacturing is well is going. Um, I'm going to do what I have done before, and I won't um, I won't try to talk when I'm back into the quarry because it's a little bit loud. Or the mine, should I say? It's a little bit loud under there. Man cave is going well. First live stream was yesterday on Court Farm. That went really well. Everything seems to be running okay. All everything that was sort of needed to be fixed has been fixed I did have another game crash on this map though this morning which was a bit weird I'm not quite sure why but anyway um, fingers crossed it was nothing serious um, I have just been sat online um, ordering some insulation um, because I insulated everything the only thing I didn't insulate in the, in the um, studio cave is what we're calling it um, was the roof the roof I didn't do um, and I wasn't intending to because once I put the, the wood burner on, it's lovely in here. I've done it this morning, it was a bit nippy. Put the wood wood burner on and it's um toasty. So well that's filling up. Um But here's the thing, something that I hadn't even considered. Hadn't considered, but we'll come out here out in the studio cave I can live stream the sound quality is better it's more I've got more room for activities um, yesterday we had a big old thunderstorm after I finished doing my live stream interestingly um, and I'm glad it started after I finished my live stream blimey the first bang of thunder <laughs> frightened the life out of me I mean absolutely made me jump out my skin and it went on for a few hours. The rain was torrential. And the rain on the studio cave roof was so loud. I mean, insanely loud. And I suddenly thought, if I have a week of horrendously bad weather, if it pours with rain for a week, it was so loud I wouldn't be able to hear myself speak. You wouldn't be able to hear me over the sound of, if you thought, you know, in the summer when I've had the fan on, left the fan on by mistake, and it sounds like wind rushing past the mic. Worse. So we get this to the quarry, get this unloaded, and then tomorrow I have my next day's load of ore that I'll take, and um, we'll exercise the horses. When we exercise the horses, um, I might go a little bit further afield. I haven't decided. Sometimes I, I was originally, when the corn hadn't grown very much, I was sort of riding around in the cornfield, but now it's all nearly fully grown. I don't really want to do that. So, no, yeah, so I was thinking, okay, two things. When it gets really cold, like when we're properly in winter, when the temperature drops below zero, um, the wood burner's fine. And like I say, at the moment, I've put the wood burner on, I've dampened it all right down, and it is roasting in here, which is exactly what I need it to be. And it holds the heat really, really well, again, which is what I need it to do. But I thought, I just, just to improve that R value, um, so I've ordered some sheets of um, condensed foam insulation. It wasn't overly expensive, but that's, it wasn't cheap either. But anyway, um, and where I've got the rafters in the roof, I've, the rafters are about, I want to say, six inches deep. Um, and the stuff I've ordered is about, I know it's six inches and then millimetres, six inches and then 25 mil. Um, so what I'm going to do is cut it the right width. I'm going to slice them and then they'll just be pressure fit. They'll pressure fit up into the gaps between the rafters. 
Um, so that should give me two things. It should give me a bit of extra um, insulation to keep the heat in. In the summer when it's hot, it should help to keep it a little bit cooler as well. But also it's supposed to give a little bit of sound deadening. Um, so like I say, we'll drop this off and uh, we, yes, that's, that's what, yeah. I'll do that kind of in between jobs. I've got a lot of stuff kind of, if you saw the man cave tour, I've got stuff attached to the rafters. I've got a few things I'm looking around now thinking, I've got stuff that's attached to the ceiling. Um, I've got a couple of glass holder, glass racks. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do that because I need them to be up there. And because they're designed to hang upside down and you slide the glasses into them. Um, not too sure. Anyway, yeah. So I, I mean, that's for me to worry about, and me to work out. Um, I've ordered three sheets of stuff, and again, I'm looking up now, thinking I might need to order some more. But when they come, I'll um, I'll sort out what I need to do with them. We'll see if I've ordered enough. If I haven't, I can always order a couple more sheets. But it's one of those things. I thought it's an investment. It's something I need to do. It's something I should have done a long time ago because I was only ever out here for short periods of time before. Um, and I'd put the wood burner on and it would warm up nice and roasty and it would stay nice and warm the entire time I was out here. then I'd go back indoors because I'm spending longer periods out here and I haven't really spent a lot of time out here when it's been really really cold so um, yeah we'll see so what we should have now I hop out and go to here. stone block there we go 63,000 litres in here now so my stone block and my stone slabs are set to selling. The lime is still storing um, and I will come and collect that every now and again. It hasn't completely filled up yet. Once that's filled up that will then start storing up. Um, I've set my pallet production to run again because I turned it off. Um, but that's on selling as well so I'll just keep it all chugging away. So what I've got to do now is if on cue Big brother swings on by just to you know just to make you aware you know they're still here um, actually I'm gonna go on foot there's no point me taking the tractor so I'll leave the lights on I did so I'm gonna go for my interview I'm not sure and um, I'll probably see you now into April 1 I'll let you know what's going on what the meeting was about and we should have some more to do hopefully I just need to get that done um, I haven't got enough ore to deliver so there's nothing to be doing there I'll see you in April. Wish me luck. It's April 1 and I've got today's ore. We're going to take it and sell it. And I will fill you in as to what's going on. Yesterday's conversation was an interesting one. Um, threatened? Is that the... F hmm, yeah, I mean... I guess I was. Um, I don't know whether it's because I, I'm dabbling, I've got my fingers in too many pies, whether I'm progressing and doing better than was expected, whether I'm I'm not showing enough fealty to the authority. I, I, I'm not sure what it is. I, I don't know what's going on, but it does make the whole um, anti-authority sort of things seem a lot more real. Whoa, that was low. Oh, I didn't take it all, that's why. Okay. Uh, right, where can I take the last bit? Oh, probably down at the um, authority disposal. <laughs> Ironically enough. Yes, yeah, so the conversation went along the lines of they want me to uh, barrel hunt. They want, they want more of these things found quicker. Um, they're willing to buy land if they need it bought but they want the barrels found now I've deliberately avoided and um, Farmer Manu was very kind and sent me um, a screenshot and some information regarding barrels and locations of things and that kind of stuff and I deliberately didn't look at it because I didn't want to know where they all are now there are some I know about already just from going around um, and hearing beeps some you'll be aware of um, some you might not some I can access some I can't well, I mean, I can. With the authorities' finances, I can. With my finances, I can't. So it comes down to, even if I own the land and I find one, they take it. 
they have rights to it and I get a payment. Now, when I didn't own the land before, because they gave me that property, didn't they, when I first started out, so that technically wasn't mine anyway, but that beeping that comes from the wall there, it's in the wall. The wall has to be removed to get to that. I've just gone past the cell point, genius. Um, I know of two out in the woodlands. I know of two out in the desert. I mean, it could be very profitable for me, because if I get the 5% finder's fee which I, I could get a five percent finder's fee and it depends what each one of them's worth we could get a little bit of a bump in money however what i'm more concerned about is that they want me to um in at least one location that i'm aware of we need to um i said we need to they are going to evict people they're going to remove people from their homes and demolish their homes if it was just derelict buildings and stuff now some out in the woodland there's a couple of old barns and you can you cut down those posts and the barn disappears that's fine but there's a couple of plots the one that we found earlier on that the authority owns the plot of land but they didn't remove the buildings because the actual flag was and the barrel was outside of the buildings i think some of the others are inside buildings so the buildings need to be removed and on the hatchet man now the warning was that it would be in my best interests to help and potentially, if I don't, risk losing my citizenship. Not just losing my citizenship, but potentially, and it was all potentially, discussions will be had, committees will meet, I could be sent back outside. So I'm left in that dilemma that people throughout time, throughout history, have found themselves in. Do you go with the flow, do as you're told to maintain and keep what you've got? Do you fight back and say, no, I'm not doing it, and risk losing everything? Which, you know, throughout history, it's happened in every country, everywhere. You know? It's, um, it's, a, it's a deep... A deep and worrying dilemma. Now, the horses need exercising, so that's what I'm going to be using. I thought I'm going to exercise the horses. I'll go out. There's a couple that I, say, I know about already. There's a couple I can I can drone show you. Um, I'm going to go inside and grab a cup of tea, but, but I'll show you the our corn's ready to harvest, and I've taken a note harvest as a contract. So our corn is good to go. We're going to need to lease a corn header. We can get our corn harvested. It's it's ready. It's good. We can get cracking. The four horses we've got left. Still breaks me up. Though. Breaks me up. Bolivar. <sighs> they need exercising. So I'm going to make up tea. We do need to go and check on our milk. We need to check out on our refinery crude oil situation. Our pallet situation. Look, I haven't cleared these in ages. I just suddenly realised I haven't been down here to do the greenhouses in a while. I need to do a big old pallet run. I haven't done one. But our field... No. Uh, which field's ready? One of these is ready. Oh no, these aren't. It was the field there. I, I thought, oh brilliant, I've got another field ready, but it's not mine. I don't own it. <laughs> our cornfield, but these are close. This was the one we replanted. Hang on a minute needs rolling i rolled it have a word son oh no we've got weeds as well <laughs> just realized i didn't even think about that we've got a weed as well we have to get some herbicides and give that a bit of a give it a bit of a whoosh uh, i'll go and grab the sprayer from the um authority yeah field 19 is good to go our field's good to go there's a few field 12 is one i've got the harvest contract on for oh i've taken that on um, yeah, so uh, hmm, I don't know what to do for the, you know. All my dreams, all that I wanted, everything I wanted. Sometimes you just got to step up, haven't you? I guess, and you might lose everything. But then more people gain from your actions. I, I don't know, like I say, it's it's a very it's a big, you know, it's a melting pot of emotions and things, you know. 
Anyway. Didn't have that cup of tea in the end. Open the front door. And this letter was on my mat. Mr. Silly P, your horse did not bolt. While you were away figuring out how to recover him, the transitional authority took him. The farmer running the authority's farm did not run off either. You know, remember I was asked if I could do some work out there? The farmer had disappeared. He was taken away for re-education, apparently. All is not what it seems. We have been watching. We are always watching. Now, I would say Xavier or Xavier. Freedom isn't free. <laughs> just to add, just to add to everything that's happening at the moment, just to add to all the strange goings on here on Frontier, just to make everything so much worse. <laughs> you then find yourself in a situation where, I don't know, it's an interesting one. It's one of those phrases you hear, um, I, I mean, I've heard American people say a lot more freedom isn't free and it's one of those things whether you are trying to maintain freedom against whatever it might be whether you're trying to gain freedom something has to be sacrificed something is it always gets given up whether it's lives whether it's your a part, a part of you your integrity your soul whether whatever it is something is given up whether it's as i was just saying whether i give up my farm and everything and stand up for what's right you know, I, sorry. I know this is. I know this is coming across as really deep. It's, I'm just. Trying, we're adding some intrigue and some, you know, a little bit more to to what's going on. Um, I'm going to exercise the horse. We're going to go up because I'm sure. Like I said, I'm sure. There's a couple of places. I don't know if I can ride the horse across the bridge. That's the only problem. Um, and I know it's a very American thing. Like I say, I said about freedom fries and freedom isn't free and it's one of those things it's a big thing in in the u.s here in the uk we we've had our fair share throughout history of uprisings of revolts of civil war of all those you know we, we're no stranger to it in this country it's not something we're taught in schools as much um and it's sort of a thing that you go and learn about if you if you're interested in history and that kind of thing you kind of go and find out a bit more about it um oh this one's a, a solid bridge that's all right um and it's interesting how, yeah, it's not that people are anti, people don't want to know about it, but you don't really learn much about it, you know, British history. I mean, I suppose when you go back to British history, you're going back thousands of years of history. You know, the sort of thing that fascinates me, all of it does. Um, and it's interesting with kings and queens that have come and gone and... Um, religions that have come and gone with those kings and queens and people that have been anti you know it's it's, it's an incredible thing I, I find it all fascinating um now i know along here if i open up the map that's why i said i'd ride the horses out there's two i know about out this way but i don't know what we're going to do about it but i can't remember where it was oh hang on there you go i told you I knew I'd heard a beep out here. Oh, there it is, right there. Now, the problem is with this one, we are right here. This plot of land, 726,000. I haven't got 726,000. So, if the authority want it, what we're going to have to do is switch the authority's account. So, we are barrel hunting to here. They buy the plot of land, and then what we'll do is dig a hole and get to it. Once we've dug the hole and got to it, we'll get the barrel. They get the money. We'll find out whether or not I get, um, you know, I, I assume with the, the land will get sold back, and we'll go and find the next one. There's four I can get easily. One is going to require, like I said, the removal of homes, and, and that's... I don't know. Like I say, if it was just empty buildings, I wouldn't think twice about it. I know it's just a game. I know, you know, but... When you go around and you, and because of the map make, because Zero Oito has put um, sound effects and you can hear people, I know it's muffled and it's talking and it's laughter, and, but your brain says, I can't do that. I don't know. 
Okay, we found it. There's just the lip of the barrel. We can get to it. Collect. 450,000. That's gone to their account, not mine. It's their land, it's their account. Will I get a finder's fee? Who knows? Please tell me my horse is still here. Yes. We shall continue. Right. The next one, again, was beeping. It was while I was clearing these roadways, I just realised I missed a whole load back there. Um, and the load's here. I thought I'd done all of this. Oh no, I didn't, did I? Because I said I didn't clear all of it. There's all of this that still needs clearing of dirt. There's a massive dirt pile actually down... That's who I suppose what we need to do now. Because we're on the authorities' account. They're not going to want to keep that, are they? Let's sell that. Um, I'm sure the next one is along... Oh, actually, is it on that plot or this plot? Now, this plot's got a massive earth pile there. Oh, I can't remember where it was now. That's going to be a problem. Then we'll go outside the wall. There's two that I definitely know are outside the wall. One of them, the plot of land's like 800,000 or something. But that'll be a lot easier for us to dig down to and get the two that are outside the wall. We'll be able to do those. And then there's only one more that I know of. I mean, like I say, there are going to be loads. I know people will comment and they'll message and say, oh, you missed this one or you missed that one. And there's this one here and this one there. Um... I know there are there are others, um, but like I say, I have deliberately avoided... I've only gone to look for, like I'm doing now, ones that I have found by accident. So when I've been doing other jobs, when I've found them by accident, as I've been driving through, driving past, and heard the beeps, that my brain has gone, all right, okay, hang on a minute, I cleared all of this. Now, I'm pretty sure, if I recall correctly, it was a long by. Field 5 was on my left. Yeah, hear it? This side. Oh, right there. Right in front of me. <laughs> Genius. Right, okay. Same process as before then, so we're here. So, authorities' money, buy the land, and we can dig. I'm not going to lie, this one was an absolute game to get to. Blimey. It was um, right, because it's right towards the edge of the map. You couldn't really get to it. Right, let's collect that one for them. 350 grand. It looks like all the other ones that we collected... Um, we found all the big money ones early, didn't we? That one that was a million was absolutely nuts. The fact we found that one. I've got to find the track and find the horse. Hey, still there. Absolute corker spot. Sp Sporticus, that's the old school. Don't know if anyone would remember that. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take Sporticus back. Can we go down, just cut across? I don't know how the horses like this so much, I don't know if they will over the uneven terrain. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to avoid the river like the plague. And then we'll put this horse back. We'll get a different horse. Why did I not get a contract come up for this cornfield? Never mind. Anyway, so like I say, next two are outside the wire. And then the fifth one that we'll find in this episode. That'll be another five on top of... How many have I found already? Three? Is it three or four? I can't remember how many I've found. Um, okay, bear with me. Right, so I'll get another horse and I'll see you out in the desert. Um, let's say the one that's in the wall, you have to remove the wall. And that got changed because um, I'm sure in the update, if you bought plot, it says on the sign, that the sign's still at the police station... Um, but you couldn't access the police station, you couldn't buy that plot of land, so it was changed. If you bought plot 100, it says it on the sign, um, then you can remove the sign. I've already bought plot 100 without even realising. But, like I said before, the walls to me aren't just a symbol. They're not a symbol of oppression, they're not a symbol of keeping people in or keeping people out. 
it's it's a protection against the elements as much as anything else. Um, you know, would it be a sensible thing to rip the walls down as a symbolic gesture of freedom? Yeah, maybe. Oh man, this episode—I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's happened to me today. <laughs> Revolution is in the air. Shh. Shh. Did I say that out loud? Shh. Tell you what, our soybean fields are going well. Look at this greenery outside the walls, as well as the, the greenery that we did for the uh, agro industrial cooperative. But look at this. I suppose while we're out here on our way up, we might as well check on uh, what's going on in our crude oil manufactorum. Oh, not as much as I thought, actually. <laughs> Oh, we got something. Let's stop there a second. What have we got? We've got a pallet of kerosene. We've got some paraffin. Very cool. I can't remember where our... Um, is this where it is? Managed production plant. Oh, I'm not on the right one. Now we're looking. Kerosene, motor oil, diesel 1,807 litres. Bearing grease and motor oil are in the 700s so that'll be we'll have to take that out from there's a tank somewhere for the diesel is that the one over there um so we can come and get the diesel whenever we want but it's running it's running on fresh air crude oil we've got 27,873 litres of crude oil that has built up from those two productions as we've gone from um march into april that's pretty good. I mean, you can, I think you can just sell the crude oil. You don't have to do anything else with it. Let's, uh, let's do a bit of John Wayne in here, shall we? There we go. So, we're heading out. Let's collect these. I was saying about the, um, the history of revolt, revolution and rebellion in the UK. The one that always springs to mind for me... Because we used to spend a lot of time down in Devon, uh, down in Devon, down in Dorset, we used to spend a lot of time down in Devon, but we used to go down to Dorset and hold in quite a lot. Um, Weymouth and Swanage and, and um, all various different places that were around. And I remember driving through with my parents when we were young um, through a place called Toll Puddle and the story of the Toll Puddle Martyrs. Um, and that always stuck in my mind. And it was one of those weird things. As a kid, I didn't know a lot about it, you know, any of that kind of stuff. And I was watching Who Do You Think You Are the other day, and who was it that it was for? Oh, I can't remember who the celebrity was. And their family member, not was boss part of the Toll Puddle Martyrs, but a similar sort of thing. It was uh, the Peasants' Revolt. That's another one that always sticks in my mind. Um, but the Toll Puddle Martyrs, it was to do with um, landowners, wealthy landowners, and farm workers, and pay, and the fact that um, pay had been cut repeatedly they were earning an absolute pittance um and a group of farm workers had fo formed a kind of a group i guess which was considered by the landowners to be a union i guess they'd sworn an oath of secrecy and because they'd sworn an oath to something it was considered to be a, an organized group um and i think it was i want to say five of them but it might have been seven I don't know i'm thinking seven they were arrested um, for organising a union and, and, and against, I don't know, against authority. Like this, I guess, against the authority. And um, they were they were shipped off to Australia. They were sent away. A lot of a lot of people during that time. That was one of the punishments. If it, and when I watched the um, Who Do You Think You Are, um, it should have been should have been. It was a sentence of death, but the death sentence was commuted, and they were they were shipped off to Australia. Um, but what oh, I'm trying to think what it was. What was it they said? There was um, the guy that I didn't lead the group, but a guy called George. What was his surname? Oh, I used to remember all this. But anyway, he wrote a phrase. Um, and it's what and again, we say about the American and, and you know that kind of but this is I mean this is this is English. This is yeah. You know, um I think it was Yeah, anyway, so no. We we raise We raise the watch. 
We raise the watch. Liberty. Watchword. We raise the watchword. Liberty. We will, we will, we will be free. We're saying about freedom. Um, and they, anyway, so they were sent off. Off they went to Australia. But there was such an outcry. Um, and the working classes, farm workers, labourers, rose up and they, they kind of marched on London at the time, which was... I'm trying to think when it was. It was in the 1800s. Mid-1800s. And um, it was something like nearly a million people marched on London with a petition. Um, and the guys got they brought back. It, it was an incredible story, really. But that thing of fighting for the rights of the, of the, you know, and that's that thing of you're fighting for your country against foreign aggressors or tyranny and oppression and that kind of thing. Sorry, I'm I'm going to stop now. It's because of all of this and yeah. But the Toll Puddle Martyrs that always stuck in my head of all the, of all the stories of all the things throughout history of all the kings and queens deposed and overthrown and and the the English Civil War and and Cavaliers and Roundheads and all that kind of stuff. You know, Guy Fawkes, all of that. You know, that one stuck in my head. Anyway, build mode. So this is what we would be doing anyway. Uh, we go to landscaping, go to sculpting, go to raise and lower. Oh, go over that, and then we should be able to just go down a bit until we get to the barrel. There she blows! Come on, be a big one. 650 grand. We'll take that. What we should really do now, just in the interests of being nice, genuine human beings. We should fill the hole back up. There we go. Hole dug, hole filled, next one done. So, what we'll do is... They'd already bought the land on this one. Uh, they were way ahead of me. The problem is the next one, I'm not sure about. <laughs> so I'm not sure about. I know it's over this direction somewhere. Look at the finances for the old um, authority. That's gone up a bit. What are we looking at so far? 450, 350 grand, 650 grand. Okay, we could do all right at this. Oh, I've, <laughs> after all the stuff I've just been saying, this, oh, this is going to sound really stupid. But it... It feels wrong. You know the whole time, you know, when you're playing the farm, because this is combining farming with so much more. This, this is taking, this is why this map, and I said this right from the outset, this map is so staggering, staggeringly outstanding and incredible and evokes all sorts of stuff because this is taking farming and it's taken it and added in a whole level of stuff that you, you don't really think about. Um, and it's making you feel feel and experience things that you wouldn't normally when you're farming because you you know normally you're farming you're when you're doing the, the game as i normally play it it's a case of building up bigger machinery more machinery build your farm more animals more money more crops earn more do more get more um oh, there we go so that's over it out in the middle and um it's that thing of now it's almost like Earning money from doing this is wrong. That it kind of sickens you instantly. You think, you know, I shouldn't take money. But then you think, if I don't, someone will. And again, all these conflicting arguments are bouncing backwards and forwards. Do I risk everything? Do I lose everything? Do I end up back out in the wilderness? Do I stand up for what's right? Do I just keep my head down and say, you know what, it's nothing to do with me. I'm, I'm just here to live my life, live my dream. But at what expense? At whose expense? You know? And this is from a farming game. All this stuff is coming off. It's just craziness. Right, so we are in what plot? If we're stood here, we're in plot 72. So that's 384 grand. Same process. Landscaping. Raise and lower. The doobly is there. There it is. Oh. That's weird, it showed it and then it's disappeared. Okay, collect. How much is this one? We're going up. So 
same thing again. Let's go back to landscaping. Level it off. Well, I'll tell you what I, was, I haven't, hadn't watched, and someone, when I did my live stream the other day, um, someone asked, had I seen it? And then the weirdest thing happened. That's four, and there's one more I know of, but the, this is the one that I'm a bit... Mm, I'm going to take this horse back. I'm going to get another horse, just so all the horses are excited. So I'll see you out of this last location we're going to do. Um, this is the one that's probably... Yeah... Not all, not all right, I don't think. The others have just been out in the countryside, but this last one's a little bit iffy. Depending on whether that sort of thing bothers you or not. Um, but anyway, so yeah, heading back. Um, I was watching Tom Pemberton yesterday. Tom Pemberton's episode that he posted yesterday was a sort of a day in the life on a BBC set because he does the Fast and the Farmerish. Um, and weirdly... Yesterday, when I was doing my live stream, I was asked, have you watched any of the Fast and the Farmerish? And I said, I haven't. I didn't watch Series 1. I didn't watch any of it. Um, series 2 is on, or it's finished now, but it's, it's on. So last night, um, I thought, you know what, I'm going to watch it. So I went on to BBC iPlayer, found Series 1, watched all of Series 1 last night, and then just started Series 2. Series 2 changes. And what I like as well is that Tom Pemberton, you can see him kind of grow into the role. The first episode's a little bit sketchy. I would like anything, really. And I kind of watched it thinking, oh, you know, this is a little bit... But... And the fact you've got... Is it, um, is it Jimmy DeVere? Uh, it's the Game Master. But you don't see him in the first series. And I watched Jimmy DeVere's Garage. The guy's amazing. Anyway, all that aside. Um, and how... Tom Pemberton gets more confident with his role and all his parts to camera and all the stuff that he does and it flows better. The games are amazing. I'm just it's incredible. The the tractor driving skill and ability actually on the way past. We'll have a look how we're looking for sheep's milk. We've got a full one and, a, and a, another one on the go. Brilliant. It's all running, everything's working fine. Um, and then series two it changes completely rather than heats and then semi-finals and finals it's a knockout situation so you've got farm teams from all over the place um, and in each episode it's a fight out the bottom two have to go head to head and then the losing team goes so over the series you lose teams one at a time until you get to the final I've been thoroughly enjoying it it's been absolutely brilliant some of the skills and some of the challenges and some of the stuff they've been doing, it just blew my mind. Anyway, I'll see you out there for the next one. And then uh, I've sorted out a header for the harvester. And I'll make a start on this corn harvest, which we've been talking about for absolutely ages. What's this, two of the horses exercised? We're going to the third one. I have exercised horse number three, so this is horse number four. Um, and we're heading down to the plot. While we're heading down, I had a question asked, and I can't remember if it was Todd. Who was it asked me? Somebody asked me. Todd, James, uh, anyway. It was regarding the horse situation on Frontier, but sort of generally. That's why I'm back on my account. And it was asked about the water situation and um, where it says they require water, but I couldn't find anywhere to put water in. So here's the thing. At the bottom, it says... Horses can be sold for a profit. Horses like hay, oat and sorghum, additionally they require water. They need to be ridden daily to increase their value. Animals are, uh, that are healthy and older than 22 months can reproduce. Numbers in brackets refer to the effectiveness of the respective food. Now that's fine. That's a generic box of information. What will tell you whether they need water or not is the rest of it, the pen information. So where the pen information says straw and then food, that's what you've got to give them. And the reason behind it, that helicopter, is this. If we go into our build mode and we go to our animals, because in all of the animal um, sections, including horses, we have pastures and we have barns and pens. With barns and buildings, generally, that's not with all of them, generally... Um, swing that around. Generally, with a barn or a building, you don't require water. With a pasture, you do. So if we go to our horses now, that standard base game one there, that horse pasture, shows there oat, sorghum, hay, and water. If I go to the next one along, which is a horse barn, the water icon goes. So whilst the information panel does say they require water that's only if it's a pasture some modded barns still require water some modders will make sure or they will put in the fact that you still need to give them water but it's a generic 
box, a generic box of information. What you should be looking at is the paddock information, whether or not it requires water or when you actually go to purchase them and place them it will tell you there whether water is requ required or not um, and like I've always said to a degree there's no such thing as a stupid question there are some yeah, <laughs> there are <laughs> uh, the only stupid question is a question not asked there you go this has been uh, quite an episode um, anyway so we are heading to the plot the plot thickens um, I'm just thinking, actually, I've probably got enough to purchase this plot. I just don't know whether, if I own the land, if I purchase the plot, would that assuage my guilt at all? I don't know if it would or not. Let's stop here. The plot is opposite, just here. And there's lots of barns and buildings. I'm th is there a silo on here? I'm sure there is. And we have a sign there. But listen... I know it looks a bit run down and derelict and there's, I mean, unless that's the building next to it. Is that the building? That's still on the same plot, isn't it? I don't know. J it just feels wrong. It just feels kind of wrong. I'm going to buy it. Now, if I buy it and I get the drum, the money will still go to the authority, but will I get more than 5% because I own the land? Because like I say, the previous one on that plot, I didn't own the land. They had bought the land for me. My job was to clear it, was to clear all of the earth off of it, was to do all of that job. And then obviously the land was sold back. That was that was my initial aiming towards get, getting citizenship. But if I actually own, own the land, would I get a higher percentage from this barrel? And I say this barrel only because, again, I can't remember what I was looking for. But, I'm sure it was on this plot of land. Where was it? There was a beeping. Yep, you hear it? I think it's inside this building. It's got to be in there. If we come away... Has to be. Has to be in there. So... I don't know. Yeah, we're going to have to. We're going to have to do it. I'll just have to bite the bullet and say, you know what? Needs to be done. So this plot here, plot 45, 121,548. I'll own the plot. But it will need to be cleared and stuff, won't it? I'll buy it. Does that make me feel better about it? I don't know. We have got a chainsaw. We have got a hose. <laughs> can I open that gate? I can. Right. Oh. And there we go. Oh, it does remove the silo. So it removes everything, pretty much, apart from this barn. That's a curious one. Which has got trees and stuff in it. And what am I supposed to do with that? I wonder if I can remove the building itself. Or should I just... Well, I suppose I could clean it out and keep the barn, couldn't I? Or do I want the land for something else? I mean, we could plough it all out and we could utilise it. So, where was the... Oh, there, right in front of me, look. So it was inside the building. So, last one of the ones that I have found. The ones that I'm aware of. Um, do I come down and clear all the earth off of this or do I landscape it if I go out of here and go to demolish can I demolish that barn I can demolish the barn if I want to do I work around it that's what I'm wondering do I work around it and have it as a oh man look at those house oh that's horrendous Honestly, that makes me feel sick. It's ridiculous, isn't it? You go into the game and you just remove stuff left, right and centre. But... That does not make me feel good. At all. Percentage today? I'm probably sitting at a 70. I'm feeling very peculiar today. I don't know what it is. Anyway, right. Let's... um. 
Let's landscape. Let's dig a hole. Um, excuse me. So it's let me dig a hole there, but not actually. Can we just go bigger? No. Oh, there we go. Come on, give me a million. Oh, what? That's rubbish. That only just about covers the land. Now I feel even worse. Was it worth it for what we just did? No. It really wasn't. You're like a dreadful human being. Anyway, well, we've got a plot to clear. You know what I'm going to do? Because it's been run down and it's been sort of derelict and trees have been allowed to grow. No, I've got a plan. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to clear it. I'm going to clear the plot. We're going to get rid of the trees. I'm going to get one of the devourers down so we can wood chip everything. We'll, we'll wood chip the lot. Um, I'm going to put new housing on it. I'm going to make a new housing plot. So we can rehouse people. So if any other plots get cleared, we can house them. I could build a hotel. There is a hotel mod, isn't there? We could build a big old... Do you reckon I'll get permission from that? <laughs> Do you reckon that will just get me immediately sent out? <laughs> sent out into the world to build a skyscraper on it. That's what... No, I'm going to do that. I'm going to clear the land. I want to build houses, housing on it. I'm not going to use it for farming. I'm going to use it for housing. Yeah. We're going to clear this. You know what? I'm going to get rid of the shed. Let's demolish the shed. We'll clear it. I'll clear all the earth off of it. And we're going to put some housing on it. Yeah, boy. Now I feel better. Last horse. Jefferson. We will get back. Um, yeah, and what I'll do, I'm going to go and grab a... a corn header i'm gonna get that corn harvesting done this like i say it's been a little bit of a, d a different episode today it's been um you know i said about doing um oh blimey that's all gone as well yeah we're gonna put some more stuff back on here i think i'm gonna to need to go on to the authorities account if i want to remove fences and bits and bobs like that we'll get a load of wood chip off that i might clear it off screen or i might i could do a live stream couldn't i tell me what you think yeah well, oh, don't message me hit me up direct message me whatever um i might do a live stream we will clear that and we'll put in some affordable housing we'll do we'll do some good do some good solidarity brothers should i have stopped on a horse <gasps> oh yes i should have I thought I'd bring the harvester rather than mucking around. I've leased um, a John Deere corn header, just a six metre, a small one. It's only a small field we've got to do. As I'm going past the authorities' fields that we planted, they've got weed in as well. So we've got some weeding we're going to need to do. If I'm going to do the authorities' weeding for them and use their sprayer and a bit of herbicide, we might as well, whatever's left over, we can do our fields as well. So, um, yeah, they've got weeds in their field, definitely, but that'll be coming up at a later date. Um, so I, might start, I might stream that, I'm just thinking, that I really enjoyed the stream the other day, and I thought if I do, you know, sort of alternate streams, alternate videos, or, you know, maybe I'd do a stream tomorrow, I don't, I'm, like I say, I'm, I'm not going to set anything in stone, I'm not going to set myself a schedule or anything, but we might do. So we're not doing the same all the time. We'll clear that land, we'll get the devourer, we'll do a whole load of stuff, yeah, we might do. And this doesn't fold, does it? I think this just stays here. Can we fold that? No, not that. No, it doesn't. Okay, this is probably, I mean, it's a little bit wider than the head, than the actual harvester. And we really shouldn't be going down the road with this, but if I can get over enough, we might be alright. So, yeah, we'll get this in. I'll get the um, corn harvest. 
Oh, we'll get the corn harvest done. Well, we'll start it now. We'll get it done. I, I, if I have to edit some bits out, edit some bits out of my waffling about revolutions and stuff like that. <laughs> Who knows? We can do all sorts of stuff. It'll be, it'll be fine. Um, I want to get the corn harvest done. So as well as um, barrel collection, checking on the various different productions. And we're doing all right, actually. Everything seems to be chugging away. I'm really amazed at how much crude oil those two... Um, those two pump buildings I've bought up, I thought they were going to be really slow. I didn't think we'd get very much, but I'll be honest, we've got up way more than I thought we would. And we're producing all those other products as well. So we're not inundated with pallets as well because I've got my other facilities set to selling. Although my greenhouses, I do need to clear my greenhouses. We'll need to do the, um, the sheep's milk at some point as well. So I haven't done a, a, a delivery plug to scare the life out of me. We'll have to do a delivery run at some point. So I'm going to see you at the cornfield in a minute. I've opened up the harvester. The other thing I was going to say was, you notice the money has gone back down. Um, the authority took 50 grand off me. That 150 grand that we um, found in that last one, they took 50 grand of that, so I didn't lose as much. Um, I've just received a call to say that because I'm a citizen now and because I'm a landowner and stuff like that, the 5% finder's fee has gone up to a 7% finder's fee. Not a massive increase, but it's better than nothing. Um, so, 2,150,000 was what it came in at. 450,000, 350,000, 650, and 700. 7% um, 7 of that comes in at 150,500. So, although we lost 50 grand, we're going to get 150,500 back, so we're up 100 grand. I mean, in essence, we were riding our horses, we dug a few holes, and we found some barrels, which is what they wanted us to do, but we got the finder's fees for it. Um, are there more? Yes. Will I go looking for more? No. If I come across them, if I hear beeping, I'll kind of make a mental note of where they are. Am I going to go... Oh, no, I know I put in the description, I think I put Barrel Hunter. Um, I'm not scouring the map for them. How many is that? Five, so we might have done eight. I'm sure somebody said there were 12, but I could have misremembered that. I'll store the corn for the time being, we'll put it into the silo. And then this field will need to be re-prepped. So yeah, we've got some weeding to do, some field prep to do. Um, we'll check to see what this is going to need. Should have lifted the header. It's all good. Actually, for a fairly small field, I think we're going to do all right out of this. I didn't think we'd get very much, but it seems to be yielding pretty well. I didn't think I'd need the trailer, but then to be fair, I probably don't. I'm so close to the silo, I could probably just drive the harvester off the field and unload into the silo from that. We'll do that. I have some important decisions to make over the next few episodes then. Am I going to stick it to the man or am I going to become the man? I shall see you in a little while. We'll see what we end up with. 
some corn, I think is what's going to be the general answer. Do I repurpose this field as a crop or do I grass it and extend the farm? Do I put more farm buildings in? Do I put any animal pens in? Do I utilise this as extended farm space or do I put another crop in it? I'm thinking farm space. I'm wondering if we could put potatoes in part of it and have part of it as some um, extended farm space. That's it, I don't know what buildings I've put on it. We've got sheep, we've got horses, we've got chickens. Pigs and cows, I guess. The cow farm across the way is expensive, so I don't know if we'll, if we'll buy that. We could put a small cow pen in so we can have some milk ourselves, I suppose. Last little bit, I've unloaded once 10,000 litres, so we should end up with just over 12,400 litres. That's not bad. We are farming. We are producing. I can see the horses again now across the land. As I said, I've now got some decisions to make. What am I going to do? It's a tricky one. And with that, we have come to the end of this slightly strange and slightly different episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.